evening, everybody. My name is Paul Neuberger. I am Brian's older brother. And it, uh, I certainly want to echo Mr. Backus and welcome you all here today to take part in this way of Brian and Michelle. And I got to tell you, standing here today, it's truly one of the honors of my life to be Brian's best man. To have the opportunity. So we have the opportunity to sit up at the head table and address you guys, and this is, this is truly quite an honor, so I'm really appreciative of this. As I mentioned, I am Brian's older brother, and I think as an older brother growing up, I embodied certain characteristics of older siblings that I would say are the hallmarks of several older siblings. Those of you in the room today, I think you know what I'm talking about when I say that there were times where I could be very protective of Brian. Go to the playground, make sure nobody was messing with him, make sure he had all his toys that his friends borrowed. There were times where I could, I'd give a lot of my time, make sure that Brian and I had a lot of time to play, have some fun, Mario Kart, all that other kind of good stuff that we would do. But I think what also comes with being an older sibling too is I could make his life miserable. I could be physically abusive, verbally abusive. I could even tell him lies going months at a time just to get a rise out of him. Like the time I told you you were adopted, Really, honestly, I think I had him going for a year on that one, so I, I'm sure he remembers that one. But I say this not to brag, and I say this not because it's anything that I'm proud of. I actually say it because I feel some guilt, especially on a day like today. Here, Brian is making me his best man. I got the opportunity to talk in front of all of you, and I'm thinking about these things that I did to him growing up. Things that I'm not proud of, things that I wish I could go back and change, but obviously I can't. So. In preparation for this little shindig this evening, I thought, how best could I utilize my time? I've got this guilt for some of these things that I did, or some of these things that I did not do that I probably could have. Brian, I don't know, but I think he suffers from some post-traumatic stress disorder from some of the stuff that I put him through. So I thought that in this public arena, in front of family, friends, and loved ones, that I would make a public atonement for some of the things that I did to Brian. A public apology, if you will. Me having a piece of humble pie just to make amends, allow myself to get rid of that guilt that I feel, maybe allow Brian to move on emotionally if there is any emotional damage I incurred on him. So what I did is I put together a little list. Nothing big, but just put the pen to the pencil, pen to the paper, and started thinking, what sorts of things today would I mind sharing? What sorts of things could I bring to this table to make an apology for? So like I said, nothing big, but I put together this little list. Uh, this, this was just what I thought of on the car ride over here today. I, you know, I wanted to bring the full list, but that wouldn't fit in the car, so I think this will have to do. I'm certainly not going to read this whole thing, because this would take five years. So, what I thought I'd do is just highlight some of these in particular that I think I'd, I'd like to uh, make a public atonement for. And I think we'll start with this one. Brian doesn't remember this, thank God. I don't remember it either, but my mother certainly does, and she's brought it up to us on a number of occasions. I was about three, Brian was about one, there's a two year difference between us, and we were in the backyard playing, and my mother goes to the window to check on us like a good mother would, and what does she see but me standing over Brian, arms over my head with a large rock, presumably ready to come down and crush his skull and incur some untold damage to him, but my mom started banging on the glass, Paul, oh, put the rock down, Paul! Oh! Thankfully I listened as she intervened, because had she not done that, I don't think any of us would have been here today. So Brian, I apologize for almost killing you when we were younger. I certainly don't remember doing that, but I obviously shouldn't have, so I, I, I apologize for that one. Let's see, uh, okay, I think, okay, this would be a good one. Uh, Brian and I again were younger, and uh, our cousin Claire came over to babysit us, which was a real treat, because that never happened too often. But what was also a real treat was our neighbor, Steven Serringer, loaned us his air rifle. Now, we didn't have a lot of toy guns, if you guys know where this is going, we didn't have a lot of toy guns in the house. My folks didn't keep guns, obviously, which was good knowing I was in the house. So, we got a chance to play with that, which was real cool. And we learned a lot of stuff that night. In particular, the hazards of compressed air when shot from three inches from one's lower lip. <laughs> Courtesy of myself, I inflicted that damage on Brian, necessitating the trip to the ER and subsequent stitches. So, Screech, I'm sorry about that one, man. You know, I, I guess you learn something and you move on, but uh, had I known that, I wouldn't have pulled the trigger on that one. All right, well, I think we got time for one more. 
And you'll notice, you'll notice one of the things I'm doing is I'm bringing up these things when we were younger. Because I think I'll get more forgiveness. Oh, Paul was five. Paul was six. These were Paul's 25. I think I'm going to leave off the list because that might be a tougher sell. Um, pretty sure I'm not going to say that one. One, you guys would never forgive me. Two, I'd probably be incarcerated. So I'm going to go ahead and avoid that. But I think we'll end on this one. Brian and I were younger yet again, and we were in the living room uh, eating some supper. We had those little TV trays, and my mother made uh, some of those wonderful Tyson chicken nuggets. And to know me is to know I love chicken nuggets. Also to know me is to know that I am a human vacuum cleaner when it comes to eating meals. <laughs> Basically, it's on the plate, then in my belly, just like that. Half the time, I don't even taste it. The other half, I don't even know what I ate. It's just off the plate and gone. Brian, on the other hand, likes to take his time, savor his meals, let the food tantalize his taste buds. So, accordingly, Brian still had nuggets on his plate, mine were gone, and I wanted his. So I got up and I kindly asked Brian to give me his nuggets. He respectfully declined. So I more sternly and forcefully asked him to give me his nuggets. Again, he respectfully declined, so I proceeded to kick him in the face. <laughs> splitting open his eyebrow, necessitating yet another trip to the ER and subsequent stitches. So, Brian, you know I love my chicken nuggets, but I certainly could have handled that in a more constructive manner. So I apologize for that. There's still plenty more on that list, so if you guys want to hear more stories, I got some more. Brian might not want to relive that, but... Um, yeah, so anyway, those are some of the things I did to him growing up. But like I say, when I open this, I feel truly blessed to be Brian's best man. Because although I might be harder on myself than I should be, that's a list of what I put him through. And for me, Brian, one of the greatest honors of my life is that you and I are still as close as we are. I consider you one of my best friends. I couldn't imagine life without you. And you're, obviously, you're easily the best brother I ever could have asked for. So on a day like today, I'm exceptionally proud of you, especially because Brian has stuck with Newberger men tradition and married up. Yeah. So we don't want to break that tradition, and certainly Brian's done that. Now I'm going to end on this. Aside from tormenting my brother, I could also torment my parents. Not in the same way as my brother. I, I wouldn't be here today had I chose to go that road. But I tormented my parents because I always wanted a sister. I said, Mom, Dad, come on, get on that. I, I'd like a sister. It's just something I've always wanted. Needless to say, that never happened. And now as I stand here, I know that God's got a plan. I know that that wasn't meant to be, and I'm okay with that. And I think part of the reason that wasn't meant to be is because it allows me to appreciate my new sister that much more. And Michelle, I consider you my sister. I'm so profoundly blessed and thankful that you're in this family. You guys are good for each other, you love each other, and I can't wait to be a part of your future going forward. So if you guys wanna grab a glass, whatever you got in front of you, Let's toast to the newlyweds, Brian and Michelle. God bless you guys, we love you. Take it on at the end of the speech. <laughs> <laughs> that a boy.